I built this shop cabinet a while back, and I really like it. When I was building it, I had to figure out how to cut the parts out of the sheets of plywood I had. Since I know SketchUp, I was able to eventually get a decent cut sheet by dragging things around. But it wasn't the simplest way of doing things, especially considering I had to take grain direction into consideration. Fortunately, there's a better way of creating cut sheets and cut lists, especially if you don't know SketchUp. It's a website called Cut List Optimizer, and it's currently free to use. I'm cutting parts from a couple of sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood and a couple of sheets of half inch plywood. You can specify grain direction if you want. And I want. Then you click Calculate and watch as Cut List Optimizer figures out the optimal way to cut out all the parts. When it's done, you get one or more cut sheets showing where the parts will come from. And a cut list in the order you should cut them. You can export it to a PDF file so you can print it, put it on a tablet, or whatever. I'm going to show you all about it, including multiple ways to save and load your projects, and tips on the best way to use Cut List Optimizer. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Websites change all the time. In fact, Cut List Optimizer's website changed a few days before I finished this video. Thanks a lot. So I have an online article that explains any changes to the Cut List Optimizer website since I posted this video. The article also explains other topics I don't cover in this video. And if I manage to get any inside information on Cut List Optimizer, I'll post it in the article. So be sure to check it out. By the way, I'm not being paid to do this video. I'm doing it because I think Cut List Optimizer is pretty awesome, and I think a lot of you will really appreciate it. So do me a favor and click that thumbs up and watch all the way to the end. Believe it or not, doing those two simple things will make a huge difference for me. Thanks. The first time you go to the Cut List Optimizer website, you get this configuration dialog. It says at the bottom that the configurations can be changed later in the settings menu. And they can. But the settings dialog has more options than the opening configuration dialog, so I'll be talking about the settings dialog. Optimization priority is fairly self explanatory. I haven't seen it produce different results, but I imagine it would in some situations. I've played around with optimization level, but I haven't noticed any difference. Here's the settings for units. It supports various versions of metric and inches, as well as generic. I'd like to have fractional inches, but the only option right now is fractional feet and inches, and I'd prefer just inches, like 16 and a half. Hopefully they'll add a fractional inches option sometime, but for now I'll just use the generic setting. This is where you enter your kerf, which is how wide of a cut your blade makes. If you don't know your kerf width, I think most blades are 1 of an inch or less, and it's okay to enter a larger value if you want to. But what's the decimal equivalent of 1 of an inch? Here's a couple of ways you can find out. If you're on a Mac, you can press Command Space to bring up Spotlight. Then just type in a fraction like this, and it gives you the decimal value. If you want the metric equivalent, add a double quote at the end, and it converts it to metric. So I enter 0.125. Notice that it changes the display to 0.13, but it's stored internally as 0.125, and that's what it uses for the calculations. You can tell because if you change the units to show fractions, it shows 1 8th. If I had actually entered 0.13, this is what the fractional value would show. Which brings us to the second way you can enter 1 8th of an inch. With the units set to fractional feet and inches, type in 1 8th. Then change back to generic, or any other unit, and it does a conversion for you. I'll explain this option later, but for now I'll turn it off. I don't know what this does. I'll explain these two later. And I'm not sure how this works either. Hey, it's a free video, what do you want? Just an FYI, sometimes I'll repeat something I've already said, but it's so I can add more details. The panel section is where you enter the parts you want to cut. Here's an important tip when entering dimensions. No matter how you're going to use a board, always picture it like this. The long dimension is the length, and the short dimension is the width. Even if you're going to use the board like this, the long dimension is the length, 
and the short dimension is the width. Trust me on this, and I'll explain why later on. Remember, the larger number is the length, and the shorter number is the width. The top and bottom here are the same dimensions, so I could have just changed the quantity to 2, but I put them in separately so I could have a different label on each one. I don't need different labels for the sides, so I'll enter 2 for the quantity. Same for the rails. The stock sheets section is for the stock you want to cut the parts from. I'm not bothering with the label here. Once everything's entered, click the Calculate button. When it says it's initializing, you can cancel it if you want. Then it says it's searching for the best solution, and you can watch as it tries different things. Sometimes this can take a while, but anytime you get tired of waiting, you can just click Accept. But each solution you see is progressively better than the previous solution, so the longer you wait, probably the better solution you'll get. Before we go any further, let me warn you about something that can be confusing at first. By default, turning your mouse's scroll wheel zooms the layout in and out, and you can hold your mouse button down to pan the image around. And that's nice, but as I said, it can be confusing, especially if you have a long, skinny piece of stock like this. A simple accidental flick of the finger can cause the image to disappear, and you might think you've lost your image. You can always press this button to bring the image back. But I prefer to click this button, which turns off zooming and panning altogether. Now if I use the scroll wheel, it scrolls the page like I'd expect. You can always click the button again to re-enable scrolling and panning if you want. That button is basically the same as this option in the settings dialog. I'm not sure why there's two places to set it. But as I said earlier in the video, I always turn this option off when I start a project. Okay, on to the good stuff. These options change the display, but they don't affect the calculation process. I prefer colored panels. I also prefer labels on the panels. This last one adds color-coded numbers and lines that show what cuts to make and in what order. They match up with the cut section over here. You can move your cursor over each cut, and it'll show you what that cut is. Sometimes you have to click it instead of just hovering the mouse. If you hover over these, it shows them on the cut sheet also. Again, sometimes you have to click instead of just hovering the mouse. I mentioned earlier that something changed on the Cutlist Optimizer website while I was making this video. This is where the changes happened, and I'll explain them in a moment. You can save your project like this, and of course you can change the name if you want to. You reload it like this. Projects get saved in your browser's cookies, and cookies can get eaten, or deleted, without you realizing it. So I like to export the list to CSV files on my computer. That way they won't get deleted if the cookies go away. And it's simple to reload the list from the CSV files. Once they're reloaded, just click Calculate again. You can export it to a PDF file so you can print it, or put it on a tablet, or whatever. The PDF includes the cut list and the cut sheet. You can export it to an image file, and that only includes the cut sheet. So here's what changed on the website while I was making this video. They added a sign-in button, and you have to be signed in to save or load projects. I just log in using my Google account, and if you have a YouTube account, you already have a Google account. You can still import and export CSV files without being signed in, but it looks like anything that works with cookies requires you to be signed in. You can read more about this in my online article, but the short version is, I think this is a response to some new regulation about data privacy. Like I said, check out my article. If you know how to use SketchUp, you're probably wondering if you can interface SketchUp with Cutlist Optimizer somehow. I don't know how to do it, at least not at the time I'm making this video, but I'm sure it can be done. So I've got a section in my online article for SketchUp information, and I'll update it with any information I come across. And if you've got any ideas, please let me know in the comments below or the comments in the article. Thanks! Suppose we're making a shop cabinet like this. Obviously, it's got a top and bottom and two sides. We'll ignore this back or front or whatever it is for now, but we also want four rails and four styles. We want the grain on the top to go this direction and the sides this direction, at least for now. It might look better like this, but let's leave it like this for now. And for the rails and styles, we want the grain like this. 
Cutlass Optimizer has a setting called Consider Grain Direction. When it's turned on, you get these little arrows that represent the grain direction. Horizontal arrows for horizontal grain, vertical arrows for vertical grain, and an asterisk if you don't care about the grain. I'm going to set the stock sheet's grain to horizontal, which is always this way on the screen. Now for the parts. Remember when I talked about always entering the larger dimension for the length and the smaller one for the width? This is where it comes in really handy. Just picture the board like this and decide if you want to have horizontal grain or vertical grain. For the top, I want vertical grain. I don't care for the bottom. And for the sides, I want horizontal grain, at least for now. Let's see what that gives us. The top's grain goes this way, which is perfect. I don't care about the bottom, so this is fine. The sides go across like this, which is what I asked for. I forgot to set the rails and styles, and if I left them like this, I'd end up with this. Not what I want. So I'll change them to vertical grain. There, that's better. This was probably confusing the first time through, but just have a little patience and it'll begin to make sense. The last option we'll look at is Consider Material. Here's how it works. I've got two sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood to cut my parts from. In the Material column, I select Add New and type in the name of this material. I'm starting the name with 3 quarter first, and I'll show you why in a moment. I've also got two sheets of half inch plywood, and I'm starting this name with 1 half first. Now I'll start entering the parts. I want this part to come from one of the sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood, so I choose that. There's actually an easier way to pick the material than using your mouse. Just type the first letter, or number in this case, of the material's name. That's why I named the materials with the numbers first, so I could pick them easily just by typing 3 or 1. This is a half inch piece, so I type 1. What would I do if I had a quarter inch sheet also? That would make two materials starting with the number 1. Technically, the names don't really matter as long as you know what they mean, so you could name them anything you want, but I'd probably name them like this. Here's the result. This is 3 quarter inch plywood, and I know because, well, I just know. This is half inch. 3 quarter inch again. And then half inch. I don't know why they're ordered like that. I'd prefer all of one type of material than all of the next, but I'm not really complaining because what do I want for free? I didn't point this out before, but this shows you statistics about the sheets it used. One last example using everything we've learned. This is from a real project when I built my quote unquote benchtop router table. I used two thicknesses of plywood and a pine board. I can't guarantee the numbers are exact. I might have modified something after I saved these values. It seems like it took a long time to calculate, but it actually took less than two minutes. Just slightly faster than I could have done it myself. Here's all the cuts. And here's a PDF. I know you can't see this stuff very well, but I wanted to give you a feeling for just how much work Cutlass Optimizer can save you from. I think that about covers it. Cutlist Optimizer's website is cutlistoptimizer.com, and you can find my article at thenewbiewoodworker.com slash cutlistoptimizer. Don't forget to thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Thanks.